Hey students, welcome to Changing Nav Color on Scroll with Greensoft and Scroll Trigger. All right, so this week's lesson actually started as a little bit of a Twitter challenge where I said the client offers $100 for you to make nav change color as you scroll into a new section. Will you make that money in 10 minutes or take hours fussing about? So what I did was I provided this starter file here and explained that when you scrolled into different sections, sometimes you got a kind of hideous color clash with the nav bar and these full screen sections, all right? It doesn't always look all that good, all right? So I made the challenge and said, hey, take this thing here and make it so that it acts like this. Ah, look at that. When the green section comes in, we animate to a light green, same thing with purple and maroon, okay? And what's cool is I scroll back the other way, we can reverse those color changes as those new colors come in from the top, all right? Now, the thing about this lesson is that I'd seen questions like this come up a few times in the Greensock forums, and a student had asked me about how to build something like this, and to be quite honest, it took me a little bit longer than I thought to work it out. So what I want to do is show you how you could make that money real quick if you follow my instructions. So let's get to it. All right, so here's the file I provided with my challenge. You'll see that as I scroll down, we have these multicolored sections, okay? And in the HTML, it's dead simple. We have a bunch of divs with a class of full screen and the color name inside of them. We then have our nav, which is a fixed position element that has a few dead dummy links inside. Let's jump over to our JavaScript where all the action happens. And I wanna show you that we have this array called section colors that has the HTML color names of each of those sections. Beneath it, we have a nav colors array, which is going to be the highlight colors we're going to use, okay? So when we enter the green section, we're going to use this hex color as the green nav highlight color. Now here we're using a GSAP set to select all of the full screen divs and we're gonna change their background colors. And basically GSAP utils.wrap is gonna allow us to wrap through all of the colors in this array. So these are HTML color names that are going to be applied to the backgrounds. What I'm gonna do is just comment out this one line right here and let me show you what happens if we run without that line of code. What you're going to see is that we see the Dodger blue background of the page, all right? None of these sections have their colors applied, but this is the line that does it all. I absolutely love gsaputils.wrap, and you've seen me use it a bunch of times in these courses, okay? There we go. We have our HTML color names applied to the backgrounds. I also made a note here that the nav height is 100 pixels, okay? So we know that when each of these sections gets 100 pixels from the top, that's when we want the color to change, all right? So I didn't want to deal with responsive stuff now, so I hard-coded that nav height as 100 pixels, and you can see it probably where are you right here, okay? In the next lesson, we will make this responsive and the nav height will change. But right now, as I resize the browser window, you'll see we stay stuck at that 100 pixels until you get like so super small that, it, that you'd never see it like this in real life, okay? So at a reasonable browser size for mobile, things are going to look just fine. So we've got these groovy arrays set up and they're great for looping. And we're gonna need a scroll trigger for each one of these sections. So I'm not gonna bore you with typing a bunch of code out when I can just boom, paste it in, okay? We've done this a bunch of times. We're gonna create a sections variable, which is going to create an array of every element that has a full screen class. We're then going to loop through each section, and inside the loop, we're gonna have access to the current section and its index in the array. I've done a quick console.log here so that you can see exactly how this loop works. I've had some beginners ask me questions in the past, and I figured I might as well just show you real quick that we can log out the current section and we're gonna use the index value as the index of the nav colors array so that we can get the proper highlight color for each section. So real quick, let's crack open the console, give ourselves a little bit of room, and it looks like CodePen automatically refreshed for us, and here's our output. So you'll see that we get the first full screen section and its highlight color, second full screen section and its highlight color. So I just want you to see what that loop does. We're going to 
close the console out, and now we're gonna focus on making a new scroll trigger for each section. So again, let's add some code, and we're going to do a scroll trigger dot create. The trigger for every scroll trigger is going to be the section itself, and what I need to do is say, you know what, I want our scroll triggers to be start firing when the top of the trigger reaches 100 pixels from the top of the page, all right? That's the nav height that we're going to be dealing with right there. And we're also going to set an end value when the bottom of the trigger reaches 100 pixels from the top. Just to see how this all works, we're going to set our markers to true in case we have to do any debugging. So let's just do a quick run and we'll see how the measurements are working that I plugged in here, all right? We should see, all right, we have the top of the Dodger blue section is right here, okay, when the page loads. Uh, let's get into the next section, okay? So these colors are a little bit hard to see here, but on the salmon section, you'll see that we have this start here and it's going to pass scroll or start. This end value is actually the end of the previous trigger, all right? So it looks like these triggers, or these markers, I should say, are all in the right place, and uh, things are good. So in the maroon section, here we have end at the bottom. So now the big question, how are we going to do these animations? Well, the scroll trigger needs to have an animation associated with it, so I'm going to say that the animation is going to be a gsap.toTween that is going to animate the nav element. And what we wanna do is change its background color to be whatever nav colors array has when we pop in the current index of the iteration of the loop. So every scroll trigger that we create for every section is going to have its own scroll so every scroll trigger that we create for every section is going to have its own tween that animates the background color of the nav to the color that we want. Now the tricky part here is that we need to figure out how we're gonna trigger this animation. And we're gonna to use toggle actions. And before I write the code, I just wanna give you a little bit of a refresher, okay, on how they work. And I'm gonna use this green sock demo created by Cassie Evans. And basically this is a trigger element and this is its start position being marked, okay? So as we scroll down, I wanna show you that when the start passes scroll or start, that's gonna fire our first on enter, okay? And as you keep scrolling up, what's going to happen is when the end passes scroller end, that's when you're gonna get your on leave. If I go the other way and end comes back down, that gives us on enter back. And then when start passes scroller start, that's going to trigger our on leave back. And basically, when I'm changing my nav color, I'm only going to be concerned with controlling my animation when we do the on enter. Once the section passes the nav going up and it's gonna reverse the tween when it comes back down the other way on leave back. So on enter, we're gonna change color to the current section color and on leave back, we're going to change it back to its previous color. So just remember on enter, and on leave back. So let's jump over to our code and now I'm going to type out those toggle actions. So we'll do toggle actions and we're going to use a string here. So on enter, I'm going to restart the tween. On leave, I'm gonna do nothing. On enter back, I'm going to do nothing. But on leave back, I'm going to reverse the tween, okay? So let me give this a run and let's see how it works. All right, I'm going to get out of the Dodger blue section and here is the start marker for salmon. And when I do on enter, ah, we restart our tween and we go from blue to salmon. As I scroll on down, the start marker for green is going to pass that scroller start and we're gonna animate from salmon to green. Did we animate from salmon to green? Hmm. Well, let's get into purple here. And when purple touches the nav, we should animate to purple. But did you see a flash of blue? Hmm. Well, let's go to red here and watch what happens really quickly. Ooh, it did a weird flicker. It went from blue to this lighter maroon. 
Why is that blue in there? Well, let's scroll back on up to the, what, top? And look what happens, the nav goes back to blue, and every time these tweens reverse, we end up with this blue color. I don't like this. Well, fortunately I have an answer because I saw Jack in the Green Sock forums mention something about our good friend, Immediate Render, in this situation. So in my video, Understanding Green Sock's Immediate Render Property, I went through how Immediate Render plays into From and From To Tweens, all right? You really gotta watch that video to know the basics of Immediate Render. But it also comes into play when we're using scroll trigger here, okay? For optimization purposes, when all these scroll triggers are created, GSAP automatically plays through their animations so that it can record the starting and ending values, all right? So it's not doing it while you're scrolling. Now the downside to this in this situation is that we have multiple tweens on the same nav item, all right? We're creating five tweens on the nav to animate two different colors. Now the problem here is that when we go through the loop, the nav's existing light blue background color gets recorded as the start value in these tweens as the scroll triggers are created. Now what I'm gonna do real quick is just set the duration of these tweens here to be two seconds, all right? Just so it's like really super clear. So let me run. Now remember, all the tweens are gonna have this light blue as their starting color. So when we go into Salmon, Salmon's gonna start at light blue and go to Salmon. So that's gonna look perfectly fine, okay? Now it's very slow, but now when the tween plays for the green section, it has blue locked in as its starting color, and we get that. It goes from blue to green, and then the purple one is gonna go from blue to purple, and then we're going to go from blue to this lighter maroon color, all right? So since that light blue is the starting color, when we reverse, we're gonna go to this light maroon color, where are you? Back to blue. And then so when we go through all these sections the other way, we get this really weird back to blue thing. So the fix for this is really simple once you know why it's happening. Inside of these tweens here, we're going to set immediate render to false, all right? And that means these tweens are only going to render first and initialize when we actually need them. So let's do a run here, and we're gonna leave that really long duration on there just so you can really see what's happening. Again, the first one is fine to go from blue to salmon, but when we go from salmon to green, watch what happens now, we go from salmon to green, there's no more blue in there, all right? It didn't get locked in as the starting value, okay? So hopefully you can start to see really the value of all these lessons I said as the groundwork back in the day, all right? You need to know stuff like immediate render so that it makes sense when you get into these more tricky situations. So we've got rid of the blue going down the page. Let's go back up and come on, go to purple. There we are. Now this really long tween is really quite ridiculous. So let's go ahead, get rid of that duration of two. We don't need any duration at all because you know the default 0.5 is just fine. So now everything should work as soon as we get up there on enter, boom, the tween plays. When I go the other way on enter back, blue. So we can just go back and forth all day long between the two correct colors in all of these sections, all right? As soon as green gets up there, wow, it's so nice. I don't wanna see these markers anymore, so we'll get rid of those, run again. And I think things are looking really good, all right? The client's going to be so happy with us. Uh, and again, you know, something like this should be fairly simple, and I really think that scroll trigger is the tool for the job, all right? We had one little hiccup, but it really was sort of the designed behavior. And now that you watch this video, you know how to get around it now and in the future in your own projects. In next week's video, we're gonna make this more responsive. Right now with that fixed height of 100 pixels for the nav, you know, I can stretch the window out quite a bit and we're still going to boom perfectly change colors at the exact right time. However, we're not always going to have fixed heights here. So what I'm going to do is just break this really quick for you. I'm gonna go into my CSS, and let's go to the nav. I'm not gonna give it a fixed height, 
And what I'm going to do for the uh, links is let's give them a fixed font size. We'll just say they're going to be, I don't know, 20 pixels. We'll get rid of this clamp and I'm going to add a padding of, we'll say, 12 pixels to them, all right? So now I don't know how tall the nav is necessarily, all right? And what's going to happen is that I may lose my positioning of my triggers, all right? Right now it happens to be really close to that 100 pixels, all right? Probably not perfect, but if I were to shrink small with this sort of a layout, things are drastically different in the height of the nav, all right? So the whole point being, I'm gonna show you how we can do things where we don't have to rely on a fixed pixel value of the height of the nav, all right? We're gonna make it a little bit more flexible. So come back next week and I'll show you how we can change it.